I'm Josh from Document, and I'm going to show you how to configure your document template to work with your Airtable data. So in this example, we have a shell of a template. So it's not wired up yet with any variables. It's just plain. And we have it connected to our Airtable account. We're already set up here. And this is the template that we're going to be using. However, if we try to merge a document using this record into this template, nothing's going to happen because we don't have any variables inside the template yet. So document doesn't know where to play, place your Airtable data. Let us first take a look at how our base is configured and what information we'll want to merge into our document. So we have an order table here. And in the order record, we have an order name. We have an account name. We have some notes about the order. We have related order line items. And that's coming from this order line items table. And a subtotal, tax, and grand total and then finally the field that we want to attach the generated document back into in the order line items we have name the order the related order the price of the item the quantity sold and the amount which is just the price times the quantity all right now that we know what information we want to display in our template let's take a look at our template and see where we're going to place that so at the top we have a place for the order number down here we want to add some notes and we saw that we have the notes field here. And notice that we have special formatting on these notes. It's a rich text field or a rich text formatted field. And over here on the right side, we have subtotal, tax, and grand total. Those are going to be formatted as currencies. So let's start telling document where to place our data. We'll start with order number, which we know we want to go here. And if we come over here in the Airtable app on the, from the uh, record that we're going to be generating the document from, that's where we want to get all of our variables from. We're going to find the order number field, and that's right up here. So we're going to copy that, select that, and it's going to get copied to our clipboard. Come back to our template and simply enter the text field and paste that in. And that's it. So that's where our order number is going to be placed when we merge the template. So we can test that by coming back into Airtable selecting the record and clicking preview. And there it is. Okay, let's continue adding more details. Next, we'll want to display all order line items in this line item section here. So how do we do that? Well, first we want to come back to our list of variables and we're going to look for order line items. We found it right here. This variable has child variables as well, but we want this order line items. We're going to click on that because that's going to be the name of the field that contains those order line items. We're going to come back into our document template, click on the section, click add edit logic. And this is where we can tell document to repeat over a certain field. So in here is where we're going to paste our variable and we can actually remove the double curly brackets so that we just have the name of the field and you're going to notice that that doesn't line up with the name of the field exactly it's been converted to lowercase and also any spaces have been replaced with underscores so once we have that in there we're going to click save and you can now see that this section is going to be repeated for each order line item okay if we come back over to document and test it we'll see what we get Okay, it looks like it's repeating properly and we just need to tell it where to place the order line item data in this section. So to do that, we're gonna come back over here into Airtable. We're going to expand the order line items variable and first we'll grab the name. So we'll click on the name, come back into the document template, into this text element that we have. We're gonna paste that in and now you can see We've added the name variable. Now, you're probably wondering, how does it know to grab this name and not, say, a, another field that we had as a name here? Well, now that we have this section repeating, name is going to be in the context of this order line item. It's no longer in the context of the entire order. It's just in the context of the order line item. And you can see that on the right side, you'll see order line items now has a name property for that order line item. So, Let's test this out. Come back over to Airtable. Collapse that. Click Preview. And there it is. 
each product is displaying its name. Great, let's add in the other fields. We will need price, quantity, and amount. Okay, so we'll come down here to the variables, expand the order line items, grab quantity, the quantity field, paste that in. Okay, and now you can see this looks somewhat different. This here is using a number formatter. Now the reason for this is we said in Airtable how we want to format the quantity field. So we have some formats set on this value, on this quantity field. We say that we know here it's gonna be an integer, so it's gonna be a whole number. So by doing that, document is already going to add a formatter so that when you copy the quantity over, it includes this number formatter. This quantity is the is the actual name of the variable, and this right here is the format. Now, there's different formats that you can use. You can use currencies, and we'll see that in a little bit. Um, but let's take a look at what this would look like if we did not use that number formatter. So we're just going to put it in there as quantity all by itself and give it another test. Okay, in this case, it looks good. Now, why would we need a, need a number formatter? Well, if we were to say have 2,500 items, come back to the order, then click preview, you'll see that 2,500 is displayed, but there's no formatting. So we don't have a comma in there in the thousandth place. So if we want to add that comma in there, that formatting, we'll just add that number formatter back in. And the syntax for that is just number, followed by the variable name, followed by the format in quotations. So in our case, it's just going to be zero, comma, zero. And that's all we need to do to tell it to format the thousandth place. Preview it again. And there we go. Now it's formatted and in the correct way. Okay, let's add in the price now. So I'll come back down, go to order line items, grab the price field, and then in this price column, paste that. And now notice this is a little bit different. So this is still using the number formatter. It's the price variable. However, we have a dollar sign in here. So this is a currency format. So I told you that we were gonna check out the currency formats. This is one of them. So what's that gonna look like? Well, let's take a look. Okay, this is a little bit different. We have decimal places in here, and we also have a dollar sign. And if the price got high enough, it would also have a thousands separator. Okay, so lastly, let's add the amount. Oops. Paste that in there. Now this has nothing because this is a formula field. So we, if we want to format it, we'll have to tell it how to be formatted. So we are going to want to format this as a number. So we're going to use a number formatter. And like we did in the last one, we're going to just add in our own custom format this time. So it's going to be the same as price. We'll have a dollar sign to say that it's currency, a zero, followed by a comma because we want to separate the thousands by a comma, another zero, and then a decimal and then two zeros afterwards to say that we want to go to the hundredth level decimal precision. Okay, now that we've added that, we can test our template again. Okay, that's looking great. Now we had 2,500, so this number is going to get pretty big. So we'll bump that back down to the original 25, but everything so far is looking good. We have our product name, our, our order line item name, the price, the quantity, and the amount. That's all looking great. Now we want to add our no, or we'll start on the subtotal, tax, and grand total. So the subtotal, tax, and grand total are properties on the order record itself. It's not in the order line items. So we're gonna come back to our variable list. We're gonna to go to subtotal and grab that. That's a roll-up field. So document doesn't know yet what type of value is going to be in there. So we're going to have to format this as well. Okay. 
So we have subtotal, do the same thing that we did before, number, and then the same format, comma, zero, dot, zero, zero. And notice how every after every step we're testing, just to make sure that we're incrementally getting it right. We don't make a bunch of changes and then not understand what's not working. So here it is. That's the sum of all of the products and it looks correct, formatted correct. Great, let's move on to the tax. Come back to our order variables. Come down to tax. Come into this text field, paste it in. And then we're gonna to wanna to format that as well, number. And we could probably copy and paste that number formatting, but it's good practice. Okay. Let's give it another test. Great. That looks correct. We can uh, adjust the alignment, but the value looks correct. And last, we want to grab our grand total. Okay come back to our template, grand total fields, gonna paste that in, add some formatting, okay, and lastly, let's give that a test. Excellent number came over. It's not the same formatting as the grand total title here, but we'll fix that as well as the alignment here. So we'll pop back over to document. We'll select this entire row and then under text, we'll change the font weight to bold. Now that's going to be bold. This is going to be bold. And for the alignment for this number field, we are going to select the column and tell it to align it in the middle. And the same thing for this column so that they're aligned horizontally. Come back, we'll retest it. Great, everything seems to be lined up. We can apply the same changes to the subtotal so that those are lined up, but everything's looking good. All right, last thing we're gonna add is the notes, and we're gonna do that down here. So I said before that this is a rich text. Rich text is enabled. So we'll take a look at what it's like to just add notes by themselves and then also to include the rich text formatting. So by now you could probably guess what the, what the variable name is gonna be for the notes, but we'll just come over here and grab it anyway. Notes. So some extra tags or formatters are included in this example, but I wanna first show you what they'll look like what the value will look like without it, and then we'll add them back in. So we've added the notes. Let's test that. Fantastic. It looks like the notes have been added. Now, where we had our, our bullets before, we now have hyphens. So what we'll want to do is we can actually preserve the formatting for the notes using those tags that we those tokens that we removed before, and those were the markdown. So the type of formatting that Airtable is using for those, uh, for the rich text formatting is markdown. So we're gonna wrap it in a markdown formatter. So we're gonna say mark down. Now notice that it's different than the number formatter. In this case, we're actually gonna wrap it in an opening and closing, and we're using this um, hash sign, hash symbol to open it, and then at the end, we're going to put in a slash, a forward slash, and then mark down to close it. Double curly braces, or we'll remove these extra extra spaces. That all looks good. Come back over here, test it. All right, fantastic. You can see that document preserved the formatting that was added in Airtable, and this invoice is now looking really good. We've got the order number at the top here. We've, we're looping over each of these order line items and displaying their information in each row. And we have the orders subtotal, tax, and grand total, and we're formatting those. 
and we have the notes as well and we're preserving the formatting that came over from Airtable. So I hope this was helpful. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions and thanks. Have a great day.